When was the last time you kept your fork when you were having dinner out? Maybe the entree was removed, the plates were removed from the table, the server comes with your bill. And what do they ask? They ask, did you save any room for dessert? Can I interest you in a dessert menu? And if you care for dessert, you want to hold on to your fork, right? Save your fork. Now, higher end restaurants said, I don't need that. Usually they bring you two forks and you've got one for your entree and one for dessert later. But when was the last time you kept your fork? I did a memorial service here recently for a friend of mine, a celebration of life. And there were 300 people packed into the small chapel. And uh, he, my friend was diagnosed with ALS a number of years ago and it eventually took its toll and he graduated into heaven. And so we were celebrating his homecoming. We were, it was a celebration of life. The family had already had a gathering where they grieved and the family really wanted to make it clear, we want to celebrate his life. Now, as someone who has done a number of funerals, memorial services, there's really two different types. And the Bible clarifies these two types of rooms. One is grieving without hope. Now, for someone who doesn't know Jesus, that room is very, very different. It's sad and it's depressing and it's, there's a lot of uncertainty and it's very, a lot of unknowns. And so I stay in front of that room. It's a very different feel. And I have an opportunity to share hope. So grieving without hope. And then the other one is grieving with hope. And this is an opportunity to celebrate with hope. It's still sad for those who are left behind, but we, we don't grieve for the person who has graduated on. And so the family really wanted to make it a celebration. And so this individual, my friend, he loved dessert. And so they made sure every guest in the room got a brownie. And, and part of the ceremony, part of the service was eating dessert because we wanted to celebrate. And it brought to mind as I presented the message, uh, I, I went up there and I, I held up a fork. And I said to everyone in the room, whether you know Jesus or not, the best is yet to come. And then I shared the gospel. For followers of Jesus, keep your fork. My encouragement to you today is keep your fork. Why? Because the best is yet to come. If things are really good in your life right now, the best has not been delivered yet. If things are really bad in your life right now, hold out hope because the best is yet to come. Now, I don't know everything. I don't know, but there's a few things we do know. Let me share something with you in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Listen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, mercy is not getting what we do deserve. According to his great mercy, rather than giving us what we do deserve, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through what? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You and I have hope today, not a living hope, a living, breathing hope through the power of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And our living hope leads us to an inheritance, to that dessert that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Now, my, my friend, he graduated into heaven, and what awaited him was an inheritance that would not change based on the stock market. It doesn't go up and down. It doesn't fluctuate. It's an inheritance that is imperishable. It will never fade away. It's undefiled. Nobody can harm it or ruin it or steal it. And it's unfading. Inheritance. Followers of Jesus, my, my friend, fellow believer, you have an inheritance waiting for you that is undefiled, imperishable, and unfading. The best is still to come. That impacts us. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the term FOMO. FOMO is a term that culture's kind of generated here recently. It, it stands for fear of missing out. But have you heard of the term photo? FO2, F-O-T-U. FO2 is fear of the unknown. I talk to people all the time who, inside the church and outside the church, who have worry and anxiety about what's to come. I've seen this grow tremendously in the last few years, that there's great fear politically, socially, economically, uh, fear of even the end times, this great fear. And Fear of the unknown. Now, someone who doesn't have faith in Jesus, I can understand that. But as a follower of Jesus, the hope, the living hope that we have of what is to come, 
is greater than maybe my concern about what I don't know. And there's a lot I don't know. But I have a living hope through the power of the resurrection to an inheritance that is undefiled, unfading, and imperishable. And so do you as a follower of Jesus. And if you do not have that hope today, as you listen to this and as you watch that, Jesus is calling you to himself and would long to have a personal relationship with you and offer you that same inheritance as a child of, of his. Would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for the living hope that we have. For anyone who's watching or listening to this who cannot say confidently that they know that they have an inheritance waiting for them, that today would be the day that they place their faith and trust in, in Jesus, recognizing that he paid the price that we couldn't pay so that we might live forever and ever with him. God, it is your desire that we would all live with hope and we would grieve when life calls for us to grieve, that we would grieve with hope. Thank you for going with us today as we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A living hope through the power of the resurrection. Have a great rest of your day.